Does your footage ever look like this? Or like this? Or like this? Ooh. Oh my god, this is the worst one. Change it. Today, I'm going to show you how to fix all of that in order to take your lighting setup to go from beginner to professional. Now, if you want to see the specifics of my studio setup, I'll go ahead and link that video right up here. But today we're going to focus just on lighting. Now, the first thing you need is something called a key light. A key light is the main light source you have that is illuminating your subject, AKA you. Now, a very cheap but solid studio lights I would recommend are the Limo Studio Lights. I've had this light source, or well, actually two of these light sources for about two years now, and they have been totally fine, no problems the entire time for 40 bucks. You know, you get one light and a light stand and a diffuser, all that for 40 bucks and you get studio quality lighting. There are two downsides though. The first one is the cord that it comes with is way too short. So you'll definitely need an extension cord. Secondly, you can't adjust the intensity or how bright the light is. So that does suck. But again, that's something that you can compensate for in camera for 40 bucks and you get this nice soft diffused light. Can't argue with that. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off all these other lights and focus just on one light at a time. So let's go ahead and do that now. There we go. So right now, the only thing I have on is one key light. Now, another option, if you want one that doesn't take up as much space and is more mobile, is a ring light. Now, these are really nice because they project a halo onto your iris, which is why a lot of makeup tutorials will use that halo light. So it shows that circle in your iris. But the downside to those is that you won't have a giant diffused light. It probably isn't as bright as a studio light. But again, they're way more mobile. You can probably clamp them on to like anything. You can take them anywhere with you. So if you don't have enough room to set up a studio light, I would highly recommend using a ring light instead. Now, all the links to any of these things that I talk about in the video are down below. Now, once you've settled on a key light, you don't want to place it directly in front of you because then it's going to cause your eyes to squint. So watch, let me move this over here and I'll show you the differences. So now the light is a bit more intense. It's causing me to squint because it's a bit harsh. In order to fix that, what you want to do is you want to put it half circle away and at a 45 degree angle. To make it simple, just put it off to the side of the camera. I like it to my left. So see how all the shadows are being casted right behind me and my forehead is like super shiny. I'm not sweaty, it's a light. So now you see how there's like a shadow that's casted right across the right side of my face. People have a preference to choose whether their good side is the right or the left good side. So figure out what works for you. I just like my light to the left, so that's why I keep it to the left of me, but whatever side you like more, illuminate that side. And then you can keep the other side a bit more dark, like you always see the shadows being casted over the side of my face over here. You also wanna make sure that your light is pointing down at you because naturally light will come from up above, not from the bottom, right? If you have light being casted from the bottom, this is what it looks like. Now you see how the light isn't even all the way to the ground and yet look how creepy it looks. I look like a monster from a 90s horror movie. Okay, so make sure that your key light is off to the side of the camera. It's also pointing down at you with a diffuser so it puts nice soft diffused light over, over you. See how much of a difference it makes with just one key light? It already looks like pretty decent, right? Now, let's take that up a notch and introduce something called a fill light, which means it's now going to fill in the shadows. But for this one, you're gonna put it off to the opposite side. So now I have the Yongno lights and I put it on a microphone stand. Now for this one, I can adjust the intensity and I'm putting it at half. I'm also putting it further away than my key light. So if my key light is closer to me and at an angle, my fill light is on the opposite side, but pushed further back. So see a difference? Now the shadows aren't as harsh anymore on the right side of my face. So overall, just keep in mind that your fill light has to be less intense than your key light. And also if it's too intense, make sure you push it a little further back. So we got our key light, we have our fill light. Next up is something called a backlight or a hair light. Okay, so now you have that nice soft blue aura behind you and that right there is your hair light or your backlight. Now you can put any kind of light there. If anything, you can always use your phone, turn on your flashlight and just leave it behind you. That works as well. Now right here, I'm just using like an LED strip bar, which you can change to any color you want. Also, you can put it on tables, but I decided to use it right behind me. It gives a nice blue, super saiyan blue aura. And then to add to that, I have one light up here matching the same blue hue that I have down here. So if you have like a shelf or if you have like a, a bookcase, and you want to highlight some of your favorite objects. For me, depending on what I'm talking about, if I'm talking about cameras, then I'll put like camera gear up here. Or if I'm talking about board games, then I'll put a board game up here. So I kind of have two backlights here, one right behind me and one for where you're showcasing products. And also one that I talked about in my studio setup as well, and that is 
the mid ground separator. I wanted to create some distance between the light bulb and me and the light bulb and the wall. So that's why I call it the mid ground separator. And the fact that it's orange, it provides a nice little contrast to the teals in the back. Congratulations, you have now completed a three point setup. And last thing I wanna go over today are some creative options aside from your studio lighting setup. Now the Yongnuo lights, I've talked about them a few times already, but they have been my favorite lights. They're so versatile. You can use them for any situation and they're mobile. They also are very bright. You can adjust the brightness, you can adjust the color. The batteries last a long time. I really like them. Again, they are linked below if you wanna pick one up. In terms of lighting, aside from the Limbo Studio lights, I think the Yongnuo lights are a great investment. Let's say you're shooting some B-roll and you want the light to look super cinematic. One way you can do that is to use an overhead light. So what I do is I take the Yongnuo light, mount it to a microphone screw head, and this goes on top of a microphone stand. And all you do is position this microphone stand so it stays right overhead of your board game or product or whatever you're showcasing. And that is the only light source that you put there. So that creates a very, very cinematic, dramatic lighting effect for whatever product that you're showcasing. Again, you can always adjust the intensity of these lights. So if your camera gets too grainy under low light conditions, you can just brighten up the Yongno lights in order to lower your ISO as much as possible. Next up, let's say you wanna shoot a cinematic skit. In order to do that, you're gonna leave your key light at the 45 degree angle, turn off everything else, and then you're gonna take your camera and shoot from the dark side. So this is actually called Rembrandt lighting. Now this is a very popular technique, if not the most popular lighting technique, mostly because it creates nice 3D depth. Now lastly, let's say you want to highlight some miniatures or whatever product you're looking at. And when you're using the overhead light setup, it's just casting way too many shadows of your product and you can't really see it and highlight it. You can also use some lights and then put it right behind your subject so it creates these nice light leaks from behind. But if both of them aren't working out for you, you don't like the shadows that are being casted over your product, you can always put it in front to create a nice clean showcase. So as always, I hope you found this video helpful. All of the lighting gear that I talked about in this video today are in the description below if you want to check those out, along with a bunch of other videos that will help you in your photography and your videography in general. That's it for me today. I'll see you all in the next video.